Donnie Bryan here, and we're going to talk about 10 critical copywriting tasks that artificial intelligence cannot do, at least not yet. And we're really talking about it because ChatGPT and other artificial intelligence platforms have exploded in popularity over the last few weeks as of this recording. And even more to the point there, one of the most influential copywriters in the game, I'm not going to say who it is, but if you're, if you're deep in the game, you probably know, uh, but he predicted uh, just a couple of weeks, maybe two weeks ago, that if he had to guess, he would say 80% of copywriters will be out of a job within 12 months. Is that true? You know, when he said it, people were nervous. Some people were nervous. A lot of people see the opportunity and they say, I'm going to be in the in that top 20%. Uh, but there was nerves. There's anxiety about that. And there's already some anxiety because there's a lot of capability that AI has. And for copywriters who are just starting, they're not sure about uh, their own skills. They're not sure how they can stay competitive. They were nervous. And, and so I want to address the, the, this claim, this prediction, uh, and say, there is some truth to it because let's be honest, <laughs> artificial intelligence can do a lot of things. It has access to all kinds of data. It can work really quickly. It can put all kinds of facts onto a page and for a simple copy tasks somebody's going to give me a hard time about saying simple but okay so for, so for many uh, copywriting tasks it can put copy on a page for you well researched uh, copy on a page for you and even can add some a little bit of color to it a little bit of uniqueness you can ask it to do special things so there's a lot that it can do uh, and for that reason a lot of copywriters will be out of jobs i don't think it's anywhere near 80 percent. i think that's way over exaggerate but here's the truth i mean some copywriters will be out of jobs but only if they're if they don't bring anything to the table other than the ability to put words on a page because again ai can do that uh so there are <laughs> there are 10 things i've got 10 things uh, that you must be able to bring to the table at least some of these things that will separate you as capable of doing what ai can't do and therefore still important still necessary for clients and for <laughs> anyone who wants to do marketing in a compelling way. Because guess what? AI can only do two things. It can do research. Again, it has access to all this data, all these words on the internet for years. <laughs> uh, and it can put them on a page. That's it. Uh, it. Well, it can again, it can add a little bit of color, a little bit of shape. Uh, and some of the more specialized AI platforms, and I'm going to do a review on at least two of them, at least I plan to, in the next couple of days, so stay, stay tuned for that. <laughs> but... They can, they can put some stuff, put copy into interesting formats, right? Uh, so there, there there are two things that it can do, there, but there's a lot that it can't do. And they all boil down to this. Chat GPT or GPT-3 as it is, by definition, cannot create. All it can do is compile stuff, <laughs> words, uh, and concepts that have been uh, put into its processor or into the, into the source material. It can't create something new. It's impossible. At least as far as I understand the technology. So guess what? If you want to be competitive and superior to AI, all you have to do is, well, I shouldn't say all you have to do, but you do have to be able to create in order to be competitive. So the, here's the 10 things. I'm going to put them in a different order than you think because I don't want you getting bored with this. Okay. So number one, uh, AI cannot currently dive deep into trending topics. First of all, it doesn't have access to uh, current it's not tapped into social media. It's not tapped into news headlines. And I, as far as I know, I mean, I don't remember the year. I think chat GPT or rather GPT three only has access to, yeah, maybe it's chat GPT <laughs> only has access to internet data up till 2018 or something like that. So I can't talk about anything more recent than that period. Uh, but also, well, I mean, it's going to change over time, but right now that's the base the foundation of where the data comes from. So it can't talk about trending topics, but also it's not plugging in real time to social media, not plugging in real time to the news. And so it can't tell you what the trending topics are. It can't tell you what the sentiment is about them. And it definitely can't uh, tell you how those trending topics relate to your industry, relate to your business, relate to your opportunity. And so if you can do that, you automatically have an opportunity to outshine AI. So that's an important thing that you can bring to the table that AI cannot do. Why you need to still be, <laughs> why clients still need you in this business. Number two, storytelling. I shouldn't have to dwell on this too long, right? Again, chat GPT only has 
the ability, as far as I can tell, tell me if I'm wrong, but it can, it, it's only, I've only ever seen it do uh, allegory, right? It can do a little children's book, little fan, fantasy stories, but it cannot give you authentic stories from real life. It cannot talk about, uh, you know, with any level of reality, any level of, you know, uh, true emotional uh, content content about, let's say, the birth of your child or you know, the struggles that lead up to the birth of a child. It, it just it, it, I'm sure the words are in there and it may be able to access some of those words, but it cannot put that narrative together in a way that's compelling and human. Uh, so if you can do that. And you need to be able to do that to, to be better than AI. I'm not going to dwell on that point because you get it. Storytelling, something AI cannot do as of now, and that you need to be able to do in order to be better and uh, still be relevant versus artificial intelligence in 2023 and beyond. Number three, uh, AI cannot, as far as I can tell, find or, or make unique connections between ideas. Uh, it, <laughs> it just doesn't have the capability of seeing connections the way that humans do because again it does not understand the words that are in there it just has access to them and can put them together but it doesn't understand what it's saying it doesn't understand what its output is and you can when you read scholarly articles about it experts will tell you it doesn't understand and so how is it going to uh, find complex connections between disparate ideas it can't do it so for example <laughs> i uh, 12 months ago, about 12 months ago, I made a, uh, I wrote an email about, uh, predictions. <laughs> so this ties a couple things together. I told the story from my own life in high school, tied it to Michael Jordan, you know, in game six against the Utah jazz, um, you know, sinking that buzzer beater to win the game and win the championship and tied that to <laughs> marketing, tied that to entrepreneurship. Uh, artificial intelligence cannot make those connections. Not going to be able to do it. And so when you can do that, you need to be able to do that. But when you can do that, you're automatically in a league that AI can't touch. You, it can't get anywhere near that, at least in its current form. Moving on. <laughs> this is related. Uh, AI cannot make, quote, I'm saying quote unquote inside jokes because there are certain things that, especially in email marketing or in social media, there are certain things that you can say uh, that your audience gets and your audience appreciates your under, your audience feels connected to right it doesn't have to be a joke but just that com com community language that uh, insider uh, information and it doesn't even know that these things exist so it can't use them it, can, it cannot properly use uh, it, now it can use slang and stuff and it will do that but it doesn't know how to connect person to person like we can just as a, a copywriter, you can say something that you know will resonate with your audience. And it's not about anything other than what we, you and I have in common as two humans. So by nature, yeah, I can't do that. So if you, if you can add the, that kind of personality, that kind of uh, changing, uh, effective, personable connection with words, uh, you can do something that AI can do. And so clients need to respect that and keep humans involved in order to add this stuff. And now I'll say this, of course, humans can use AI and add these things in the, themselves. But that's why you still need to be around, because even if businesses, organizations use AI, they still need human copywriters who know how to do these things effectively uh, and consistently in order to add these important, <laughs> essential components to the copy. OK, so number five. AI cannot leverage your unique assets. It just wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> so, for for example, uh, if you have a proprietary uh, methodology, you could put that in there, right? But it's not going to it's not going to be able to know the nuances of that uh, methodology. It's not going to know how that differs from what everyone else does. It's not going to know how uh, your users or your potential users feel about your methodology versus somebody else's or how the, the unique value, the unique um, benefit that comes from using your methodology solves problems for your audience. They can't know that. 
<laughs> so uh, it doesn't have that. The heaven doesn't have that ability. Also, this is one thing. Uh, testimonials. Now, you can. It will even call for testimonials. Say, put a testimonial here. Put a testimonial here. But if sometimes you get a testimonial, and it becomes its own content, you know what I'm saying? If someone says something amazing in a, in a testimonial, that can become an email by itself. It could become a blog post by itself. It could become anything. An ad. It doesn't know that. It's not going to know that. AI won't know that. But as a copywriter, going through these things, observing. Uh, absorbing <laughs> and uh, analyzing, you're going to be able to say, this is worth talking about. This is worth highlighting. This is worth uh, distributing, making sure people hear this. AI hey, can't do that. So you have an advantage just by nature. You're going to be able to do this, whereas AI can't in its current form do anything like this. Number six, I have not seen this. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong now, but I have not seen AI write cohesive, compelling, and <laughs> accurate long copy anything anything more than a few hundred words uh begins to fall apart the pieces don't fit together and the logic the golden thread of logic doesn't it has a hard time keeping it going through several hundred words and you can say you can argue that if you uh <laughs> create different sections i can do a couple hundred words at a time and stitch them together guess what you need a copywriter who knows how to get those sections uh the right sections from AI and then how to stitch them together in a way that's cohesive, coherent and compelling. And so you're still absolutely necessary uh, where AI, you know, even where AI is being used. OK, number seven. This, this is one of the ones I thought you'd be find uh, a little bit predictable. Somebody's going to say this. I don't know that anybody said some of the other things, but it, AI is not it has no emotions. It's going to have a hard time targeting emotions in, intentionally and effectively. And I have yet to see real persuasion from AI. It can talk about benefits. It can highlight some things that may be attractive, but it does because it doesn't understand emotions. It doesn't understand motivation and cannot understand those things. Uh, it's going to have a hard time doing real persuasion on a high level. And the more that you use it, I mean, it gets better as you use it, but it's, it's, the more that you use it, you'll find you don't get different outputs. You keep getting different versions of the same. And so you, rather than being effectively able to, you know, target uh, a particular pain point, target a particular fear, fear, target a particular uh, objection, be able to target a specific uh, like hope. It's not going to be able to do that. And so your ability to do that as a copywriter makes you better then AI gives you an advantage over AI. Okay, we won't dwell on that point. Eight. Now, I just want to mention objections, but AI can't anticipate the specific objections of your audience. It may know some general objections because it has all that data. What it doesn't know, I don't think it can know, uh, the specific objections that your audience has. Unless, I mean, as you train it, if you keep talking about the same objections over and over again, probably you will learn. And in the future, you know, future versions will probably get better at that. But when you introduce new information to your audience, you get new objections. That's just how it is, right? A new sales pitch or a new presentation brings out new thoughts and new objections. And humans can uh, anticipate that. Salespeople do anticipate that. Uh, copywriters do anticipate that. AI, I don't believe, can anticipate that and maybe a very long time before it can, if it ever is able to anticipate that. Now, again, you can, a real copywriter can go in, a human copywriter can go in and, and address these things in AI generated copy. But that's why you got to be around because <laughs> the generic stuff that you get from AI needs to be spiced up and made specific, made accurate, made relevant. Uh, to the task at hand and so that's why you're still going to be in essential uh, for <laughs> beyond 2023 okay number nine i do not understand or do not believe ai can effectively know how to differentiate you from your peers <laughs> if you're both using the same say there's two uh hamburger shops whatever <laughs> hamburger restaurants and you're both using chat gpt to create copy and you're talking about beef you're talking about hamburgers you're talking about 
low sodium, you're talking about whole grain buns. The, the output's going to be very similar. And so in order for you to be unique, I mean, you can add different things, of course, in your prompts. But in order for you to be unique versus the other cop, uh, not copywriting, hamburger joint, you're going to have to have, you're going to have to know what the other place does that you don't do. And what you do that the other place doesn't do. And why that matters to the audience. Why it should matter to your pot potential uh, buyers. Yeah, I can't do that. And so, again, that's why you're going to be absolutely <laughs> essential as an asset to marketing departments for businesses for as long as, I mean, I can't see a time when that will change. Number 10, AI cannot, somebody's going to tell, say it, somebody will say it. It can set some kinds of strategy and you can program it to have sequences in mind and different things. Fine. <laughs> and it can, you can probably with uh, the right data inputs, get some sort of outputs. Uh, but in terms of real time, real world, uh, agile marketing strategy, I don't see how AI can do it. Uh, is it, <laughs> you know, how is it going to know, you know, for my particular business, the first time I'm using it or the first 10 times I'm using it, whether I should do 10 emails or, you know, four emails. How's it going to know if I, you know, the order of the different uh, topics that I cover, what's the most effective? And there will be a time when AI can do split tests and things like that. But how's it even going to know what to test? It's going to need inputs from humans who understand copywriting, who understand marketing, who understand strategy, and who understand messaging, sequencing, who understand the audience. Uh, so that's an, another task. AI just can't do it. Not going to be able to do it anytime soon, as far as I can tell. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to encourage you. If you're worried about your job, there's only one reason you need to worry. If you don't bring anything to the table other than writing. Well, another reason would be if you don't market yourself well enough and AI gets better pressed than you, you may lose your job. <laughs> you may lose out on, on gigs. Uh, but if you can bring these 10 essential tasks, you're going to have a great advantage. Let me just quickly go over them again. I didn't plan to do this, otherwise I'd have had a slide. <laughs> so you need to be able to dive into trending topics. I mean, you already are able to do that better than AI. Number two, you need to be able to tell stories. You need to tell stories. Everyone could do better than, than at this <laughs> than they currently do. Pretty much everybody can do better, can tell more stories, uh, AI or not. Better storytelling, better copy, and it's going to help you to win uh, in your marketplace. Finding unique connections between disparate ideas, making inside jokes or connections, interpersonal connections that are like in-group connections. AI can't do that, and you need to be able to do that, right? Leveraging your, your unique assets, your proprietary uh, methodologies, your um, testimonials, <laughs> your anything that, that's unique to you that nobody else has, and why that matters to your audience, you need to be able to do that. Right? Number six, uh, writing long copy. Not every business needs long copy, but if you can write long copy, you can have a, a job uh, that AI can't take from you anytime soon. Number seven, being able to write emotional copy, persuasive copy. Number eight, uh, to anticipate specific objections of your audience, your client's audience. Number nine, being able to differentiate uh, from competitors. And number 10, being a strategist will give you advantages that AI can't touch, at least not yet. And I think for the foreseeable future, you're not at risk if you have an, you know, any combination of these at your disposal. Okay, so <laughs> make sure I got the right slide. The conclusion of the matter is, is what I just said. If you, you need to be able to bring more to the table than just writing, uh, you need to be able to do these 10 things or at least, you know, three, four, five of them. Uh, and if you do, then I would not worry about AI. That's not the main threat <laughs> that you need to face right now. So uh, I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to level up your skills as much as you can, add these 10 things uh, and promote yourself and your ability to do these things because your clients may not know. They may not know. They think I can just put a put, you know, ask AI a question and I'll get copy that can sell everything that I got. They don't. But they don't even know the prompts that they need to ask. And so that's why you're going to be absolutely critical. So 
I'm open. <laughs> if you have questions, ask in the comments below. If you have thoughts to share, please do that. And if there's anything I got wrong, please tell me because I'm trying to navigate this world too. It's technology that's pretty new and I'm learning it just like everybody else. Uh, so feel free to tell me that I'm wrong. <laughs> tell, me, tell me anything that I got uh, mixed up. Feel free to tell me anything that I missed. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Continue to level up your skills and let's win.